In this section, we continue our discussion of line integral and we will learn what is conservative vector field and what is potential. Let me start with one simple example or one simple property of a definite integral of a scalar function. If we have a scalar function f from r to r that is continuous in some interval, then the definite integral say from A to B, f at dx, can be evaluated as the antiderivative capital F at B minus antiderivative at A. And antiderivative capital F to the function small f is such a function which has the property that its derivative is equal to the function itself. And we are always happy when we find the antiderivative. Now, the question is, if we have some vector field f arrow from Rn to Rn, and when we consider the line integral over the curve C of this vector field f, Don't be confused that we used capital F here for the antiderivative. But when talking about a line integral, we use capital F for the vector field to be integrated. So this does not correspond to this one. No, no, no. So let's go back. It would be nice to have some function such that the integral is equal to the difference of the function. Hmm? And if such a function exists, we are happy. And yes, it turns out that for some vector fields, such function exists and is called potential. And such a vector field which has potential is called conservative vector field. If we denote the potential u, then the integral is then equal to the difference of the potential at the end point minus the potential at the initial point and point of the curve C minus potential at the initial point of the curve C. <coughs> well, and similarly as here, the useful object, the antiderivative, has the property that its derivative is the integrated function, then similarly Corresponding to this condition, we have that gradient of the potential u must be equal to the integrated vector field f arrow. <clears throat> In particular, the partial derivative of u with respect to x must be equal to f1. And the partial derivative of u with respect to y must be equal to f2 if we are in a two-dimensional space and when we have a three-dimensional problem then the partial derivative of u with respect to z must be equal to the third component of the vector field f and the definition goes this way if a function u is continuous and has continuous derivatives in some open connected set and if it satisfies these conditions then we say the function u is potential for the vector field f and we say the vector field f is conservative and then the line integral is equal to the difference of the potential at the end point minus the potential at the initial point of the curve C. This is easy to show because FDR is F1 dx plus F2 dy. Let's write it in the two-dimensional case only. 
the idea is the same in a high dimension. <coughs> but if f1 is du dx, and if f2 is the derivative of u with respect to y, then this is the total differential of the function u. So you just accumulate small differences of u and the sum of these, the integral of these small differences is the potential at the end point minus the potential at the initial point. And this is a gen direct generalization of this formula uh, which holds in the one-dimensional case. The big difference is that if the integrated function in one dimension is continuous, then the antiderivative exists. Sometimes it may happen that we have not the good formula for the function to write it down in a closed form. We cannot write it down, but it exists. The problem is because we have not, not enough names, not enough symbols, to describe all possible functions. But strange enough, this is not always the case, this is not always true in a higher dimensional case. Some vector fields are conservative and have potential, and some are not and have no potential. It would be nice to have some test, some signal, some condition to see whether the given vector field is conservative or not, whether it has potential or not. Let's start with a two-dimensional case, that means with these two properties. If we differentiate this equation with respect to y, then we get the second derivative of u with respect to x with respect to y. And on the right, we have the partial derivative of f1 with respect to y. If we take the second condition and we differentiate with respect to x, then we get second derivative of u with respect to x with respect to y is the partial derivative of f2 with respect to x. And now, if u is nice, that means it is continuous and has first and second derivatives continuous, then these mixed derivatives are equal. And if the left hand sides agree, so must do the right hand sides. So the condition is that the partial derivative of the first component with respect to the second variable must be equal to the partial derivative of the second component with respect to the x value. So this is an easy proof of the following statement. If u is potential of f, then this must be true. This is an implication. Well, and for an implication, we may ask whether it, is, it, whether it holds even in the opposite direction. If this is true for all x, y in some set, does it mean that the potential has that, that the vector um, field has, has potential? It is conservative. And does it mean that then we can evaluate the vector field this way? Yes, under one additional condition. We want the set on which we work to be open and simply connected. Simply connected it means that it is connected and it has no holes. As, a, as an example, if we have a set like that, this is two isolated islands, this is not connected. If we have a set like that, this is connected and it is also simply connected. Simply connected means that there are no holes. If you take a ring like that, 
that means you take a circle or something like that and you remove one point or something more, then this is not simply connected. Simply connected means that this is connected and then each curve can be deformed continuously into a single point without leaving the center. So we don't want any holes, any missing points inside. If we are in a three-dimensional case, then similar to this condition, we can also compare these two lines when we differentiate the first one with respect to Z and the third one with respect to X. And then we get the following condition. F1 differentiated with respect to Z must be equal to F3 differentiated with respect to X. And then we can write the third condition when considering these two lines. This time we differentiate this one with respect to Z and this one with respect to Y. And we get F2 dz must be equal to derivative of F3 with respect to Y. <coughs> if we imagine x as x1, y as x2, and z, uh, z, z as x3, then you see 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2. So <coughs> it plays well together, doesn't it? And once again, these are the necessary conditions for a three-dimensional vector field to be conservative, that means to have potential U. If a vector field is conservative and has a potential, it has several useful consequences. First, it is easy to compute the integral when we know when we have the potential. We just evaluate the potential at the end point, at the initial point, and subtract the two values. But you see, the right hand side depends on the end point alone and the initial point alone. This is the initial point of the curve, this is the end point. But the integral seems to depend on details on the particular shape of the curve. But as it is equal to this one, it does not. So if you change the curve to something like that, or something like that, or something like that, or even a more complicated, you must get the same result. This is an example, or uh, an example of a conservative vector field is the gravitational field. If you move the object from one position to another position, then you must do some mechanical work. But if you change the, the if you change the path, keeping the initial point and the end point the same, the energy that you the, the work that you do is equal to the difference of the energy at the end point and initial point, independent of the details of the path. Then we say the integral is path independent. And one more interesting consequence is, very useful one, if the curve is closed, that means the initial point is equal to the end point, that means the curve looks like that. Then the integral is equal to zero. Because if these points are the same, then you subtract two equal values. And the integral of a conservative vector field over a closed curve is zero. We will illustrate all these uh, results in exercises.